Hi, welcome to this video scribe on psychology in extreme environments. There's been a long history of studying people in the polar regions, why people choose to go there, and how the environment impacts on their health. In this short insight, we're going to explore both the brighter and darker side of living and working at the ends of the Earth. Ever since those first sailing voyages to the Arctic and Antarctic, humans have continued to venture to the cold and desolate landscapes found in the higher latitudes. On these voyages, travellers have often mused upon the human element of polar exploration and the effect of the conditions on a person's psyche. Journals kept by polar travellers are rife with insights into the impact of the polar environment on aspects of mood and the camaraderie of the party members. Consistent with his experience in Antarctica, Apsi Cherry Jarrod, member of Scott's ill-fated Terra Nova expedition, actually used the term polar psychology before the discipline even existed. Early observations and later more rigorous scientific studies have documented the impact of the polar regions on both the brain, how a person thinks and their cognitive function, as well as on their body, how they feel, their response to stress and the physical reactions to the conditions that they are in. To understand how people respond to the polar environment, it is useful to first examine the conditions under which they are operating. Nowadays, there are two broad types of expedition to the pole. The first are those mobile endurance activities, things like a ski traverse or speed record attempt to reach the pole or complete a crossing. Second are visits to research stations or aboard polar vessels, incorporating varying degrees of confinement, including wintering over. During both of these activities, individuals will experience a range of physical, psychological, and interpersonal stresses. Physical stresses include things such as cold and the constraints imposed by the habitat. Psychological stresses can include monotony, boredom, and disrupted or poor quality sleep. And interpersonal stresses relate to the interactions with other people, cohesion and cooperation of the group. Interestingly, in a previous expedition, one polar expeditioner said he spent most of the trip plotting the downfall of another team member, creating elaborate ways he could get away with murder. There's now been lots of psychological research conducted with scientists at polar stations and with members of polar expeditions. Pulling this work together, professors Lawrence Palinkas and Peter Sudfeld summarised findings in their paper titled Psychological Effects of Polar Expeditions, published in The Lancet. The traditional perspective of the polar regions was that they were pathogenic or disease-producing. Indeed, researchers identified a range of psychological reactions, including somatic symptoms, disrupted sleep, cognitive impairment, negative affect and mood, and interpersonal tension and conflict. On the other hand though, and in keeping with a more contemporary understanding of extreme polar environments, researchers have also identified salutogenic or health enhancing effects. People in Antarctica have talked about a sense of achievement, togetherness, sense of tolerance, confidence, better health, and increased humanity. So we know then that people will experience the polar environment in different ways. Researchers encouraging a more balanced view of human performance and health in extreme polar settings have suggested a response can range on a continuum. This can include breakdown and those more re negative reactions at one end, being resilient and able to bounce back from stress, possessing the methods and techniques to successfully cope with the demands of the environment, onto a more positive reformulation or sense of growth and salutogenesis at the other. Where a person lies on this continuum will depend on a range of factors. This will likely include an interaction between the person, their personality, motivation and background, and the environment in which they are operating in, the unusualness and the severity of the stresses faced. Thank you very much for listening. This has been a short video on pathogenesis and salutogenesis in polar expedition environments by an extremist. If you want to know more about psychology in extreme environments, why not join the learning community at inextremist.teachable.com.